Hello and thanks for joining us for another DNH Azure video. In this video, we're going to be spinning up a new virtual machine and then assigning it as a domain controller. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first step is just simply going to be spinning up the VM, which is something you uh, may or may not already be familiar with. So I'm going to go through this relatively quickly. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is add it to a, uh, a new resource group just to make uh, everything nice and clean on my end. So I'm going to call this DC Demo Group. I'm going to call the virtual machine DC Demo 1. Select my region. In this case, I'm just going to keep it as East US 2. Uh, I'm not going to uh, do any sort of high availability for this. Keep it as 2016 data center. I'm going to just uh, increase the size here slightly. Uh, let's go with, yeah, just a DS2 V2, which is two CPUs and seven gig of RAM. Create a user and a password for that user. And then just for our purposes, I do also want to make sure I allow selected supports and I select RDP. That'll allow us to connect to it. Now you can do this manually. If you forget to do this step, you can open and open up this port later on. But just, you know, for our intense purposes, we're going to open it now. Uh, and I don't have a Windows license. This is if I have a Windows license with Software Assurance. I could save money uh, using the Azure Hybrid Benefit Program. Click Next. I'm going to stick with premium SSDs, and I'm not going to create an, uh, any other additional data disk. It's not unnecessary for just a data, uh, a domain controller. Uh, as far as virtual network, I'm going to attach this to an existing virtual network I already have called VNet01, but you can do this in however configuration you, you wish. I'm going to stick with the only subnet I have in there for now, subnet 01, and create a new IP address for it. The inbound port is going to stick with RDP since I opened it from uh, before in the previous step, and we're going to go ahead and hit next for management. Uh, this step here, you can pretty much leave exactly the same it is, as it is unless you really want to um, nail down your Diog uh, reports. Uh, we're just going to leave this as the one that it automatically creates for it. Okay, and then finally, just next all the way through the tags and advanced, it'll uh, verify and validate this configuration, which there shouldn't be, yep, there shouldn't be any problem with, and then we'll hit create. This VM creation can take uh, anywhere between, say, a minute and five minutes. Uh, for this particular size VM, it shouldn't take much longer than that. Let's go ahead and wait till that completes. Okay, we are started. So now we're going to go ahead and connect which allows or requires us to download an RDP file and connect. I usually say don't ask me because every time it connects, it'll do that for you. It'll ask you to authenticate. I'm going to change this to the admin account that I just created and put in the password that I selected. Again, don't ask me. And here we are. This is going to take a moment to do its initial setup. Uh, once we are connected, then we are going to do very traditional steps here of promoting this server to a domain controller. This is stuff that uh, is no different from an, any on-prem uh, server that you've ever installed yourself. Okay. Once you have server manager up, uh, it's still doing a few more checks here. I'm just going to move ahead uh, so I don't have to wait for it. We're going to go to manage. Once we can. Add roles and features. We're going to do role-based or feature-based installation. Uh, it's In this particular case, if we had multiple VMs on here, we would select it. In this case, we just have the one, so we're going to continue. And the role that we're going to be adding is Azure, excuse me, not Azure, but just Active Directory Domain Services. Uh, we're going to include all management tools and all the subsequent uh, add-on features. Click Add Features, hit Next. Uh, go right past this. This basically keep exactly the way it is. Any uh, prerequisites that it needs for the server rule, it will install then. And then finally, hit uh, Install. Normally, I would have clicked this little box that was up here to restart uh, once the process is done, if necessary, to do it automatically. Um, but I know for in this case, it's not going to ask me to restart. It's just going to take a moment to install these features. Okay. 
Okay, once the, once the feature has been installed, we can go ahead and hit close. Um, and you will notice ADDS on the left-hand side here. You will also notice an exclamation mark here under notifications. This is a very convenient location for it to tell you that even though you have ADDS installed, you still need to promote this server. So it's as simple as clicking here on this link, and we're going to promote this to a domain controller. Uh, so this is if we wanted to add this domain controller to existing forests or, or add a new domain to an existing forest, we're going to create a new forest. Forest is a collection of domains. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just call this DNH demo DC just to keep things consistent. Oh, I'm sorry. And that would either be .local or .com. We're going to just do .com for now. I'm going to keep everything exactly the way it is. This is your forest and domain functional levels. Uh, since this is a Windows Server 2016 build, we're just going to keep it at its highest functional level, which is the OS version that it is. Um, do, 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 we're going to add a password here for DSRM. And then next. Um, we can create DNS delegation. Um, for this, you know what? Um, we are just going to skip it. A lot of times I would create DNS delegation with this uh, domain controller. That's why I hesitated. But for this, for the purposes today, we're just going to move forward and uh, show you how to promote this to a domain controller. All of this we're gonna, is going to remain the same. There might be individual reasons why you'd want to make some adjustments, for the, but for the most part, 99% of the time, you're just going to go ahead and click Next all the way through. So you get to this point here where it's going to do a validation check. I was going to say I'll probably receive a bunch of errors, which I did. This is because I don't have, let me see, like static IPs is probably saying, yeah, it's not delegated as a DNS server, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, again, this is not going to be a production DC. I just wanted to go through the steps for uh, promoting to one. So uh, these things you can always set up later on, but it certainly is something to note if this was a production DC uh, that you'd want to set these up before well, before it would function, before it would actually work. But anyway, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to go ahead and click install. This should only take a moment, and then it will require us to restart this server. So there you go. Uh, as soon as we were done, the uh, connection was lost because the server itself needed to restart, which it is doing right now. And if we needed to, we could simply just connect on that same RDP file we had before uh, to connect to it. But we don't have to. Because now that our DC has been created, that is the purpose of this video. Uh, if you want to see the next step, which is uh, going to be when we uh, connect this domain controller to Azure Active Directory and synchronize those two directory lists, uh, stick around for our next video where we go over precisely that. Thanks and have a great day.